Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I'm going to be answering some specific questions related to how to put a pantry together. I recently did a video about essentially how to open up a bag of flour and put it into your pantry, and uh, there was a lot of interest and enthusiasm for that, and that's great. I'm glad that there are a lot of new people that are into the idea of prepping and preparedness. Uh, I know a lot of you guys don't necessarily consider yourself a prepper. You think that if you're not wearing a tinfoil hat and if you're not like foaming at the mouth crazy, you couldn't possibly be a prepper. I have a very low bar for what qualifies as a prepper. Essentially, if you store food in case there's some sort of an event that would make it difficult to get to the grocery store, like a storm, you're a prepper. If you put a key outside your house in case you accidentally lock yourself out of your house, prepper. If you attach your seatbelt to yourself before you drive in the car because you're uh, you know, concerned you might be in an accident, I mean, how often do you really get in an accident but you put that seatbelt on? prepper. I have a really low bar for essentially uh, to me what being a prepper means is to prepare against things you know that you don't want to happen or you know you want to mitigate the problems that you'll have if something happens and you take steps in advance prepper. So uh, welcome to this community it's a really great way to live your life it's really laid back and chill because when things are going wrong and things always eventually go wrong to some degree there's a storm there's a this there's a that or whatever you know if you're a prepper and you prepared for it you can just lay back and kind of watch everything and it's not really that big of a deal at all to you personally anyway. Uh, so we're going to talk about how to kind of put together a prepper pantry and we're going to talk about a uh, a couple different foods. I mean, there are so many different foods. This, this video would be like eight hours long. It's going to be a quick video. I'm going to talk about rice. I'm going to talk about wheat. And I'm going to talk about some of the general things that you can do to try to make your uh, pantries uh, set up so that it'll make those things last as long as possible. Let's start off with rice first off. Rice is a really good... Is that 20 pounds? A heavy 20 pounds. Uh, rice is a really good prep. It lasts a long time. It usually comes in a plastic bag like this. If you're going to uh, prep a lot of these for kind of like the long haul, you want it to last several years, and I'll direct your attention down here. You probably can't read it, but I'll read it to you. It says Basmati rice, and it says 10 of 2016. So October of 2016. At the time of this recording, the rice in this container is just about five years old. Um, that's not a problem at all. I've never had a problem storing rice uh, except for one event, and I will tell you about that event. Uh, but even then, I was still able to eat the stuff. Um, but rice is a really good prep. It lasts a long time as long as you store it under uh, reasonably good conditions, and it's pretty cheap. I mean, you know, you don't have issues with uh, you know, having really super expensive rice unless there's some kind of an emergency. So it's really, really easy and cheap to get this stuff right now. You know, one of the great things about prepping is that you're buying stuff when it's cheap and then you can use it uh, even when it's expensive and you don't have to pay those high prices. So anyway, uh, this rice right here, it's in a big plastic bag. Now, uh, this is actually not for my personal pantry. This is just generic long grain enriched rice. Um, and the reason I have this bag is because uh, my pantry isn't just for me and my family. If there was ever some kind of an event, like uh, preppers call it like an SHTF event or a Teotihuacan event. Uh, SHTF means shit hits the fan. It's kind of crass, but that's what it means. Uh, Teotihuacan means the end of the world as we know, which is a horrible acronym. Uh, acronym? Acronym is what I meant to say. I'm sorry. Um, but it, um, you know, it represents a certain thing. Um, if there was ever an event like that, it's not just going to affect my family. It's going to affect people around me. Not everyone around me prepares for things. So I want to have some things in my pantry that I can give away to people. I don't want to give away my good stuff. I don't want to give away my organic basmati rice. But I do store some things so that I can give away. And I think that's important to be able to help your neighbors in a time of need. There's always a fine line with that because you don't want to be known as the person that everyone goes to when they need food because eventually you'll, you know, or pretty soon you're going to run out. But I want to have something that I could potentially give out if I wanted to. So anyway, this is, what this is really uh, for in this uh, case is it's a really good example of the way that rice arrives at your house usually. It's in a plastic bag and if you're going to store it for just a short amount of time, uh, the plastic bag is just fine. You can st stack it in your pantry, and as long as you keep it cool and dry, this pantry that I'm in right now is burned into the earth. The entire back wall is buried under the ground. It's like, my house is built is kind of like a walkout basement, so there's all windows out there, and we live on that side. This is a big insulated wall over here, and that is also insulated, but it is burned in dirt. It stays cool in here uh, at the moment, and generally it's about 64 or 65 degrees in here. So I keep my pantry about that temperature, try to keep it as dry as I can using a 
dehumidifier occasionally, try to keep the, the area nice and dry. But under those conditions, rice is going to last a long time. But I would not leave it in a plastic bag like this if I wanted it to last years and years. A couple of reasons for that. One, this kind of thin plastic, it, you know, it's not as much of a barrier as it seems. You know, there is gas intrusion, there is moisture intrusion through this kind of plastic. Um, and also, if there was a uh, an insect, like a weevil, for example, and we're going to talk about weevils in a little bit, I guarantee you. Uh, if there were uh, weevils in this environment, they could chew right through this plastic and they can get at your rice. Although if that happens, that's not the end of the world. And again, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Now, um, so if you get stuff like this, you want it to put it into something like this or got it somewhere else. Where is it? There we go. Or something like this. This is a, uh, a wino jug. These are like those gallons of wine that you, uh, you know, you see. I've never act actually I did try wine from one of these ones. It was horrible. Uh, but, uh, I find a lot of these at recycle stations. You know, people are throwing them away and they're really good for storing stuff. The, the glass, uh, you know, nothing's getting through the glass and it just has this one little seal up at the top. So this is a great way of storing stuff. This is uh, October of 2015. Uh, it looks like I got this. This stuff is a year older than what's in here. Rice stores for a really long time if you store it under, you know, reasonably uh, decent conditions. And again, that's just kind of cool kind of dry. Um, so uh, these are two uh, different ways that you can store rice. Uh, this one here, I, I, most of my stuff is in things like this because it's big. This is a five gallon, uh, not five gallons. Um, I don't know how much this, uh, how many gallons this thing is, but, but it can hold about um, 50 pounds of flour or rice or whatever, uh, you know, in, in these containers. So uh, I, I really like these. I'm going to put a link in this the description down below if you want to get some containers like this again they're still made of plastic so they you know they're not perfect they're not as good as glass but there's no weevils that are going to uh, bore through this and they're you know they're nice you can kind of bump them around a little bit and they're not going to uh you know crack like the glass will and also they're stackable uh what's underneath this holding this up is another one so uh you can stack them a couple high and uh they i just find them really really convenient um so yeah if you're going to be storing rice you know keep it as cool as you can my pantry is around 65 degrees most of the time or cooler and uh, keep it dry. You know, if you need to run a dehumidifier now and then, uh, you know, that will help with that. Uh, as well, uh, you can, here we go, there's so much stuff in here. Uh, if you want to keep uh, the environment inside here as dry as you can, I would recommend uh, using some desiccant packs. And I just buy these uh, bulk through Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description below. Just these little desiccant packs. Um, you can buy them in this size and there's actually larger sizes that uh, I'll usually put into a big uh, bin like this. Uh, but that helps to even you know further ensure that the stuff on the inside here is going to be nice and dry. Um, also inside each of these, I go in. I whenever I open up these up, I try to be really careful about like not kind of leaning over too much. I don't want like you know skin from my face and hair to fall in or whatever else might be on me. I put a couple things in here. I mentioned I throw a desk and pack in here. I also like to have a scoop right in there, and you can buy these you know just through Amazon or whatever. Uh, just have some extra scoops and. Uh, you don't want to be sharing them from one container to another because if you ever did get some kind of a critter in one of your containers, you don't want to be cross-contaminating all of the different containers. And that brings me to another point. If you are going to buy a lot of rice, um, you don't want to be um, mixing a bunch of different rices all in one container. I had an uh, issue once where I was mixing a bunch of beans in one container. I had like turtle, black turtle beans and pinto beans and all sorts of other beans. And I just, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the film Amelie where she like sticks her hand down inside the beans. I, I was just loving that. So I had this big bean container and I would like mix all the beans I had. And it was like, just like a forever soup where I got new beans. And I added them to the can container. Forget dates. I, this was like early when I was first learning to do this stuff. Well, one of the problems is that everything was fine until I got one bag of beans that must have had like some kind of a, a weevil or, a, you know, a, some, some kind of an insect, I forget what it was, but some kind of an insect was introduced into the bin and the entire bin got destroyed by this, you know, beetle that went through the whole thing. Um, so if you are going to be, you know, buying stuff for your pantry, you want to store it in uh, certain size containers and you don't want to be keep, you don't want to keep mixing the stuff between the two. So it's like, you know, if you happen to bring something into your house that has some kind of a bug or, you know, pest of some sort, you're not just spreading it throughout your, your entire area. Um, I, I will mention uh, just the story that I referenced about weevils. I did get weevils in my rice once. Um, I was storing it in uh, containers actually like this. I had a bunch of containers like this and the weevils were, I got, I got sugar in this one here, but the weevils had gotten into these guys and uh, 
from my research, I was actually able to eat all the rice. What I did was that I uh, took all these containers and I put them in my car. It happened to be uh, middle of summer. I put them in my car, and you know, cars can get like an oven in the summer. Uh, and I just let them all cook, and that killed all the weevils. It killed all the eggs. And from my research, uh, it's it sounded as though it was perfectly not harmful to eat the excrement of the weevils and the weevils body bodies themselves they just introduced a little extra protein so i was uh yum 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 was able to just eat all the stuff i did pick the weevil bodies out i would uh, uh cook the rice and when you dump the rice into the water the rice sinks and the weevil bodies don't so i was able to pick out the weevil bodies uh but you know sometimes you know you got to do what you got to do and uh you know i don't like to waste things so so i end up eating that stuff anyway oh so that that's kind of a general sense of how to store things keep them cool keep them dry um and uh and that is you know my sense of rice it's a, it's a pretty good prep you know this stuff here 2016 is five years old uh, the stuff in that uh, uh glass jar i had is like six years old at this point still smells aromatic still smells fresh and uh, i haven't had any issues other than that weevil incident once and like i said you know i was able to solve that one uh the other thing i want to talk about is uh wheat uh in the uh earlier video uh, that kind of launched this one, I was talking about flour, storing flour, and the comment came up a couple times uh, that it's better to store um, unground wheat as opposed to the flour. And that's true. That is true. If you are storing uh, ground things like ground oats or ground wheat uh, or whatever, uh, it's not going to last as long. Um, but uh, this gets into one of those situations where it's kind of like, yes, something's technically true, but you know, you don't have to go crazy about it. Uh, it while it is true that you can store, uh, they're called wheat berries, like the, the grains of wheat. Um, it's not, it's not something, this was very confusing to me when I first started. You'd see wheat berries sold at the store. I'm like, does wheat grass grow berries on it or something? It's like, no, wheat berries refers to the grain that gets ground down into wheat. It's like wheat seeds. They accept instead of calling it wheat seeds, they call it wheat berries. I don't know. Um, so wheat seeds, known as wheat berries, are what you grind down to create the flour. Now, if you buy a bunch of wheat berries and you store them in something like this, keep them cool, keep them dry, throw a desiccant and pack in there, they're gonna last on average longer than flour uh, that, you know, that's ground down wheat berries, uh, you know, under the same conditions. But that said, I, I am always storing flour uh, that, it, you know, for, I've had stuff that's like been at least four or five years old and it's it's still fine. Uh, you know, I'm sure the nutrition is broken down a little bit. I've heard that, you know, the taste breaks down a little bit. Um, but this is one of those situations where, where you don't want um, the perfect to, to get in the way of, you know, doing something. And I know for most people, uh, a lot of people don't have access to wheat berries and they do have access to flour. And even if they have access to wheat berries, you have to grind it down. I've done a lot of grain grinding. I have a hand mill, a good one, uh, but you know, it takes, it takes time. It takes a while to grind that stuff down. And if you were in emer an emergency situation where you're really wanting to, uh, you know, live off of your preps, uh, one of the things you're going to find, uh, that is, a a commodity that you don't have that much of, you know, you may have a lot of food, but you're gonna find that you don't have a lot of time in any way that you can kind of avoid some kind of a laborious time consuming task, like grinding wheat berries down into flour. If you're in some kind of an emergency situation and you know, you've got a lot of other stuff that's beckoning for your time, you know, that's probably a good idea to try to avoid that. Um, now again, Wheat berries are gonna last longer, uh, but you know, flour lasts a long time anyway. Now, I, I don't know, if you wanna store the stuff for 50 years, you know, maybe the flour completely falls flat, but you know, I, I've gone like half a decade uh, of with flour and it's still totally fine. So, you know, a lot of times I think there's people that wanna get into uh, prepping and preparedness and they feel like if they can't do something in, in the absolute perfect way, they might as well not even try at all. And I would never advocate for that. It's always better to do something than to do nothing. And uh, that the line, again, between ground things like flour and unground things like wheat berries um, is so far in the future, I think for most people that you really don't need to worry about it. Um, in, again, unless it's like, if you, if you wanna store this stuff for 50 years, Maybe we could have a conversation there. But uh, for people just starting out, don't worry about it. Get the food you can, get the food you know how to use. Start with that and don't worry about it. it not everything has to be perfect for you to make things better for yourself. Because, you know, let's say some kind of a, uh, an event happens and you can't get to the grocery store, you don't want to go to the grocery store, you don't think it's safe to go to the grocery store, whatever the case may be, maybe the food's not in the grocery store, there've been a lot of crop failures already this season. Um, you know, whatever the case may be, 
you know, wouldn't you be better off having uh, flour that might have lost some of its taste and maybe has lost some of its nutrition because it's two years old? Wouldn't you be better off having that than nothing? I would say yes. So uh, whatever you do, start with something, begin with something, do something, because no matter what, if it's food, you're going to eat it eventually. You're not going to lose money. And, uh, you know, I think I, I would put I put good money on the bet that the cost of food, uh, if it ever is going to come back down, it's going to go up before it comes down. So, you know, it's a good investment to invest in food because you're going to eat it. And as long as you keep it, uh, it you know, cool temperatures, keep it cool, keep it dry. You know, it's not going to spoil on you. And, uh, you know, if you know you're going to eat it eventually, you're not losing money. That's it. Good luck. Welcome to prepping. It's a wonderful way of life. And if you have any questions beyond what I've talked about here, put a note down in the comments below. I'm one of those YouTubers that tries to answer every single question that, uh, you know, pops up. So if you have a question, ask me. That's it. And thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.